Well, hello again. Welcome back to Following to Lead with Kevin East. I am still Kevin East, as I love to say, and I'm glad you're uh, joining us here on this podcast again this week. Um, you know, every week I always say this, but my goal with this podcast is to inspire people to follow Jesus in such a way that it impacts the way that we live and the way that we lead, both at work and at home. I love having on different people. I love learning from different people, and I love inviting you along in that journey. And today, I, I've invited a good new friend of mine, um, Dr. Bill Goltier. Bill, is that even how you say your name, by the way? Bill Goltier? That's how a lot of people say it, but it's pronounced Galtier. Okay, see, I'm from South Louisiana, and there we would say Goltier, but I'll, so it's Galtier. Yeah. Okay, so Dr. Bill Goltier. Bill, thanks for being on the podcast today. It's fun to be with you, Kevin. Uh, I was enjoying interacting with you, and now we can share our conversation with your listeners. That's right. Um, it is so weird, you know, I, I to be totally candid and transparent with everybody listening and watching. Um, I, I was trying to think back today, Bill, how I even met you, and I realized it was, uh, I was looking at taking a sabbatical last year in 2020, and a pastor friend of mine said, hey, I found this sabbatical guide online about preparing for a sabbatical. I found it, read it, really liked it, reached out to you. And then you and I started meeting monthly for the purpose of you preparing, kind of helping me get ready to, how would you say, sabbat well? Is that how you'd say that? <laughs> Take a bunch of Sabbath days in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and so we've been meeting monthly, maybe for about seven or eight months now, um, you and I. And I just, as I've told you personally, Bill, I've just so benefited from the time. And so I asked you to come on this podcast um, because as I look to want to really help people follow Jesus in a way that really, man, it, it just transforms them. Um, God has used you in my life this past year as, a, as an agent of transformation, I'll call it. And, um, and I want to invite people to hear from you today. And so as a matter of introduction, you are Dr. Bill Goldtier, uh, if I said it right that time. Um, you're married to Dr. Christy Goldtier. Am I getting the last name right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what I have fun laughing with you about is you're a doctor, you're a psychologist, and you're married to a doctor who's a psychotherapist. What is that like? I have to ask. Well, you know, it, it might sound intimidating or uh, intense or something, but, you know, we're soul friends and uh, we, we really get each other because we're both therapists. And so we understand the language of Christian psychology and emotions and relationships and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I joke that it's great to be married to a therapist because I, I need a lot of listening and empathy <laughs> and guidance. So. Well, I have yet to meet Christy, uh, so hopefully at some point I will. Um, but I've definitely gotten to know you over the last months. Uh, y'all lead a ministry together called Soul Shepherding that I think y'all launched together years ago. Tell us about what Soul Shepherding is. Yeah, it's a ministry to pastors and leaders and, and all kinds of people who are serving God. And we we cultivate intimacy with Jesus and emotional health uh, so that we can be uh, strong and fruitful in the different ways that we're serving God. Wow. Well, I, I guess, you know, from what I know, y'all put out books, you have a podcast, um, you do like, um, what do you call them, conferences or init intensives, or what do you call those? Yeah, it's so our Soul Shepherding Institute. They're, they're five-day intensive retreats. It's a, an immersive experience for men and women who are serving the Lord. Some people come uh, as a, a couple. Other people come uh, individually, whether they're single or they're married, but their spouse can't come. And so we're helping pastors and missionaries and spirit, spiritual directors and business leaders and church leaders and all kinds of people, uh, especially, you know, pastors and leaders. And we're, we're talking about uh, life with Jesus and serving the Lord. And, and then we don't just talk about it. We, we do it. So we, mm -hmm. we, we guide everybody in scripture meditation experiences and uh, different ways of uh, prayer and solitude and uh, soul talk together, uh, spiritual direction groups, so that we're really living into the material. And it's all about bringing it then back into our ministry context, whatever that is. And then lastly, I want to say, you know, you kind of have that, from what I understand, kind of a new initiative going. You know, you've met and done individual kind of um, 
coaching, I guess you'd call it, you know, I'll call it therapy for people like me. Um, I think you're now even moving more towards like working with ministries as a whole to help kind of shepherd their teams in some ways, I think. T- tell me about that, what you're doing there. Yeah, so we work with uh, churches and uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, come alongside the, the leader and the leadership team to seek to uh, shift that culture to be more more Christ-centered, more uh, emotionally healthy, and uh, following uh, Jesus' principles of, of leadership and, and, uh, and teaming and so forth. And so uh, we're doing consulting and, and training. Our, our new book, Journey of the Soul, is a key tool in that because we teach the, the stages of faith and the emotional and spiritual uh, principles of growth related to that. And so that's super important in our, in our leadership and in our ministry that we're, we're in tune with Jesus in ways that are, are healthy and, and honoring to the Lord so that our, our ministry can be out of the overflow one of the things I know for me, and I, and I want to kind of open this up as we, t- as we get into this conversation, there are all different types of people uh, that listen to this podcast. There are stay-at-home moms. There are stay-at-home dads. There are pastors. There are principals. There are business leaders. Um, I've had so many different types of random people reach out to me. Um, but I, I kind of want to, maybe I want to single out a certain uh, type of person here today, and maybe I don't need to, but for the type A-driven leaders, um, I really want to invite them to listen well today uh, because, you know, Bill, one of the things you and I started talking about, you know, seven, eight months ago was my realization. I I told you this past week when we were talking on the phone that my wife one time said that I was intense. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm laid back. And and she was like, what? So she put it on Facebook. Hey, for those of y'all know who my husband is, he intense or is he laid back? And like droves of people were like, are you kidding? He's intense. And I'm like, what? And so I've come to recognize I'm, I'm a bit of a type A driven type leader, um, and that can lead to unhealthy places. And so um, I'll say, for you, I, I think you've told me before, are, you're used to working with people like me, type A leaders of all different types, t- t- uh, shapes and sizes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure uh, you who are listening that uh, many of you are type A, and if you're not, you're probably married to someone who's type A. So, uh, yeah, Christy's not type A, she's type B, and that's why we like to minister together as it helps us to cover the room. But I, I'm sort of an odd duck because I'm very type A, ambitious, driven, uh, hardworking, uh, but I'm a therapist. And so I, I had to learn a different way uh, of being in order to be um, to excel as, as a therapist and to do that uh, with Jesus. So. I, I sort of have both sides to me, but my nature is, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of energy and work and, and ideas and, and improving things. And so uh, mm. some people experience two bills. Um, you know, people like you, Kevin, know me in, in sort of a, a conversational space where I'm listening and, and I'm caring and they don't think I would be type A. But then when you see me lead, leading my organization and doing different projects and things that you, you can feel the, the energy and, and, and the work that's going on and, and uh, my own struggles to stay in that easy yoke of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I've told you this, Bill. Um, I've interviewed, you know, a number of people now here in this podcast that are some of them that are kind of like heroes of the faith to me. And there's become this kind of nucleus of sorts of people that have really become even as I prayed with you before this podcast, they become an oasis of grace for me. People that just like are so, they're just defined by grace to me. Um, one of the people that I love as an author is Dallas Willard. And as you and I have talked, I've come to realize you were personally, you personally knew Dallas Willard and were mentored by him. What was that experience like? Oh, it was life-changing. You know, I'd, I'd read all of Dallas's books and reread them and then I started uh, following him around the country to listen to him speak, uh, uh, and especially listening to his uh, teachings and uh, seminary classes and so forth on CD. And so I, I logged uh, a couple thousand Dallas Willard hours, uh, literally. Sort of had a graduate degree in Dallas Willard. And um, I just decided to call him one day uh, because I had met him in, in here in Southern California. It, in a way, it's a small world when you're in spiritual formation ministry to pastors and leaders. And so we had been in a few different situations where I connected with him. Uh, and so he knew who I was. And I asked to meet with him. And he said, you know, sure. And so I started meeting with him. 
and it was very uh, powerful for me to experience the uh, the author of the divine conspiracy just as a humble you know person just uh listening with gentleness and uh taking hold of my hands to pray for me and just helping me apply his teachings to to my life and uh to my ministry and we we both shared a great love for for pastors and for Christ spokespersons and helping pastors not burn out and helping them to uh, live out of their own intimacy with Jesus and their own soul care. Mm, that's incredible. Well, earlier this uh, this year or in 2020, one of my first podcasts I did with an old friend of mine named Dr. Michelle Picorni, um, who did her PhD in, in burnout, spiritual burnout of people. And um, I, I've been very candid over these last podcasts if, if people haven't heard me, but about a journey through cancer that I'm currently walking through, about um, kind of in 2020, kind of feeling flat and just, you know, what's going on with me, unmotivated at times. And that's partly when I reached out to you and just said, hey, would you help me prepare to take a sabbatical well? In your experience with type A driven people, what do you see oftentimes happens, like, as you and I have talked about this, what do you see they often get to or what? Do they? Do you see oftentimes they hit burnout, or they do they near burnout, and then something happens? What do you typically see there? Yeah, I think that uh, what we teach in Journey of the Soul is that really all of us, whether we're Type A or Type B, you know, at, at some point and probably at a few points in life, we're going to hit the wall, and um, burnout is is one example of that, and it's especially something that uh, hardworking, ambitious folks are are prone to to run into to cr or crash into or collapse into. And uh, it's because we just don't, uh, we don't have a very good regulator on our, our limits and our boundaries. And we're just used to pushing ourselves, whether it's on the athletic field or, uh, you know, in our, our work or in uh, our financial investments, whatever we're doing, we, we think we can do more or, or do it better. And we're used to sacrificing uh, some pleasures and, and fun and even relational things and sadly even, you know, family things in order to excel at what we do. And uh, eventually we overdo that. So, you know, not getting enough sleep, uh, working too many hours, uh, internalizing stress, uh, being in a hurry all the time. Uh, and um, most of all, something that we teach in Journey of the Soul, the, the problem is not only the obvious in terms of boundaries, but it's uh, relying on our own abilities and our own energy rather than on the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, of course, we have uh, access to the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And so it's just a matter of learning how to how to live and relate and work so that we're more more in tandem with the spirit of Jesus. And we're learning to rely on God's grace, you know, as we do what we are doing. Hmm. All I know is you and I have talked, uh, each time we talk on the phone, um, man, I, I just get off the calls, you know, so humbled and grateful and refreshed. Um, you know, early on you told me, Kevin, I'm not going to give you, a, you know, kind of a, a new list of to-dos or, or, or a new thing. You know, my question to you early on was like, how do I figure out a different way to operate? Like, how do I do this differently? Um and each time we talk, you've been this oasis of grace for me of like, you know, where I go, how did you even know that about me? Like, how do you even know to ask that? I mean, that's just remarkable. I want to kind of, you know, normally when I interview somebody, I've read their book, you know, things like that. And you have a new book coming out. I know you've written other books, but you have a new book that I really want to talk about today to kind of give people listening a little bit of a sneak preview because it's going to come out around the same time this podcast airs, I think around February the 16th, if I remember correctly. Um, it's called Journey of the Soul. Tell me, tell us in general what this book's about, um, if you would. Give us a quick overview. Yeah, the subtitle is uh, A Practical Guide to Emotional and Spiritual Growth. And so in Journey of the Soul, we unpack the stages of faith. We call them Christ stages, and it's using Christ as an acronym. And the idea is that, you know, in following Jesus, uh, we all get lost. Uh, or stuck, or uh, we start losing motivation. 
uh, when our kids were little, we, we used to like to take them to Disneyland out here in Orange County, California, and was taking our, our three kids at one time and our middle child, Jenny, at the time was four years old and our youngest was in diapers. And uh, I was with our oldest, David, and then Christy was changing the diaper of our youngest. And then all of a sudden we, we looked up and our middle daughter, Jenny, was gone. We couldn't we couldn't find her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I, I went into a semi panic mode. Um, you know, we, we, we contacted the, the Disneyland uh, um, administration, you know, their security people. And then I started running around <laughs> looking for her. And I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I fortunately, I thought to pray which is, was the best thing I did. But I mean, we're, you know, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Where am I going to mm -hmm. find my daughter amongst all these, you know, tens of thousands of people? And, you know, she's just four years old. And, I, and I'm praying and I'm thinking, well, I mean, it's Disneyland. Probably she's safe. Um, well, then, you know, sure enough, it, uh, it, it was really just a matter of minutes. And Disneyland found her. <laughs> and uh, one of the people told me, hey, you know, because they had walkie talkies. This was before cell phones. So, you know, we, we found her. And she's over uh, in Toontown waiting in the line to see Mickey. And so, <laughs> so, you know, came back, gave her a big hug. And, you know, I knew better than to, like, get frustrated with Jenny. You know, I mean, in my emotions, I wanted to say, Jenny, what are you, you can't go away like that. You know, you scared us to death and something bad could have happened to you. And, you know, I knew not to say that. And so I, I just said, you know, oh, honey, just so glad you're OK. And and so but we came to find out, you know, well, she just wanted to go see Mickey. And, you know, but it, the story illustrates that uh, we need a guide. You know, Disneyland had trained people that they know how to find lost kids. Mm -hmm. And so they, they knew, how to, you know, where was she last? And, you know, they knew the, what would a little kid want to do? And they just spot, oh, she's going to Mickey. Yeah, <laughs> that's sure right. Enough, that's where she was. I was running out of Toontown to the next you know, <laughs> village to try to find her. So yeah. in life, it's like that. We, we, you know, especially if we're type A, like we've been saying, you know, we sort of want to be captain of our own ship and we want to know what we're doing. But you know, like you're illustrating just from your own journey, Kevin, you know, we need someone that's going to, whether it's a soul friend or a mentor, but someone that will listen to us and pray for us and sort of get, see us from the outside. Uh, we need a guide and we need, we need someone that understands the stages of faith and their emotions and, and the spiritual life to sort of guide us along. So we know where we are because, you know, when you're lost, it's because you don't know where you are. When you know where you are on the map, then you can sort of know the next steps. So that's the premise of Journey of the Soul, is giving people a language to understand these stages of faith and the, the different needs and challenges at each of the stages and, and the different spiritual disciplines that are going to be helpful at each stage because, you know, a lot of Christians don't really understand. There's a, there's a great variety of spiritual disciplines and soul care practices you know, it's sort of a lot more than, you know, reading the Bible and, and prayer and, and going to church. And and these different disciplines are like different categories and different purposes behind them. And some are, are likely to be most helpful at certain stages. And so when you know your stage, a whole world opens up to you. Hmm. You know, that's one of the things that as you share with me this year. It's really been very freeing for me because... You know, I've been a believer for decades. Uh, I've gotten to disciple people, speak to a lot of people, um, share with people. And um, this was eye-opening to me, the idea that, you know, as is, is I've been on this in this relationship with the Lord for all these years, that that relationship looks different. And it makes sense because my relationship with my wife right now and year 17 of our marriage definitely looks different than year one. But I hadn't really considered that in my relationship with the Lord, that 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 it changes. And so, you know, one of the things you've said to me before is, you know, Kevin, you're, you're trying to go back to things that were pivotal in your growth. You didn't say it like this, but maybe in year one of marriage with the Lord, you're trying to go back to those things when it's, it's new things that you need to discover. Uh, would you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So uh, just a brief overview of the journey of the soul map. So the Christ stages. Our uh, C is confidence in Christ. And the H stage is help in discipleship. And the R stage is responsibilities in ministry. And usually somewhere in that stage, we hit the wall. We might have hit it before then, 
but uh, probably we're going to hit it after some years in uh, active ministry and service and even parenting and uh, and doing work as a Christian. Uh, and then the wall, it becomes a stuck point for many people, and that's where we tend to try to kind of revert back to practices that used to be life-giving for us and uh, teachings and experiences in books. And, and a lot of times those wells are dry and we need to find new wells. And so um, the wall is actually an opportunity to evoke a, a new stage and lead us into the second half of the journey. And that begins with the I stage, which is called the inner journey. Uh, and then the S stage is spirit-led ministry. And the T stage is transforming union. And so there's six stages and um, they're all good. They're all to be celebrated. And you can love God and love your neighbor uh, equally well at any stage. Uh, there are benefits of uh, progressing along the stages, though. It does facilitate new levels of intimacy with God and, and potential for deeper experiences uh, in God's love and sharing that love with others. Uh, but the stages are like containers, so it's not a measurement thing, and it's not even linear. It's it's uh, cyclical, and you know we, we we move back and forth, and you know we're probably in more than one stage at a time. But we have a, a home stage where we're, we're we're most at, and from that home stage, we we're especially sort of dipping into maybe the stage before or, or the the next one coming. And so you know, a lot of you who are listening, you might relate to Kevin's story, and. Uh, a lot of us as Christians, we're in that R stage. Um, you know, why would you be a leader and, and listening to uh, following uh, to lead you because you you want to serve God well and uh, you you want to make a difference for the kingdom of God. You want to take those talents that God has given you and invest them in people, whether in church or work, your family. And uh, that's so important in the Christian life. But Early in our Christian life, we tend to serve God more out of our gifts and out of self-reliance and, and within our own abilities. And that's why we, we get tired out with compassion fatigue or burnout, or maybe it's, it's the challenges of the pain and suffering in our world and uh, struggling and wrestling with God over that. Uh, might have a faith crisis. So there's different experiences that we call the wall in the book and we have a whole chapter on the wall because that's the pivot between the first half of the journey the first three stages and then the second half with the second three stages and learning how to let the wall uh, or, or or the spirit of god at the wall do its work in us to to do that uncovering work so that we begin to do the the inner journey work of reflecting on our emotions and our needs and our sins and our struggles and cultivate that longing for intimacy with Jesus. And that's what really brings us into potentially a great renewal and into the second half of the Christ stages. And, you know, a lot of Christians miss out on that because they don't they don't understand the inner journey or maybe it scares them or they don't have language for it or uh, some of those spiritual disciplines that, that are facilitating that, that deeper life uh, don't feel um, like safe to them or they feel uncomfortable with some of that. And so we, we give language for all that and help people to, to see the goodness of what the Holy Spirit is, is doing in that inner journey so that hopefully they can get, get through that wall and into new growth and grace. You know, it seems like, you know, as we've talked and even hearing you describe it again, it, it seems like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that, that people might, might get to this, what you're calling this R stage of this journey and bump up against this wall and you know, not really know what it looks like to kind of move into the inward journey of sorts. And so they just kind of stay in this cyclical pattern of just bumping up against the wall. And it, to me, it would seem like they a decision has been made that they almost choose to become an imposter and they might talk as if they have a relation, you know, an intimate relationship with the Lord and because they want it. And they feel like if people found out they didn't have it, they would be disappointed do you ever hear that from people? They, they feel the pressure to kind of communicate something that they might not be necessarily experiencing in reality. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that's so um, hard for all of us as leaders, uh, certainly pastors and missionaries, but really any influencer, you know, a small group leader, uh, even as Christian parents, you know, we 
uh, we see God use us and we, we want to uh, love other people with Jesus. And so we want to be a good witness. And so we can, uh, we can sort of uh, put out a, an image or, or a talk that uh, we're not living into. And so uh, in our book, we call that a sanctification gap. Where there's a gap between what we believe mm-hmm. and what we're actually experiencing and living. And, uh, you know, the truth is that all of us as Christ followers, when we've been following Jesus for some years, we're going to have some gap there. We're, we're going to know more than we're able to live. Um, but we need to be always uh, trying to narrow that and, and not let it keep widening and widening. Because what the temptation is, as we've been walking with Jesus for a while, is to start sort of living off of the past Mm-hmm. and stories from the past and experiences from the past. And really, uh, we need some fresh bread. And mm-hmm. that's what the inner journey is about. And, and most people, they don't understand this. And, and I don't think I would understand it either if I hadn't studied psychology and become a therapist. But the, the intimacy with God that really we all long for, I mean, some of us who, who are you know, have masculine traits, men, and, and, and frankly, some women as well. They're, you know, we're more in our heads or into actions and, you know, the bottom line and maybe don't trust feelings so much. Uh, and that, that profile has, has difficulty getting through the wall because the inner journey has two sides to it. Uh, the one side is this, this closeness uh, to God, this, uh, w- the warmth of God's presence, this devotion to God. But the other side is, is more of a, of a mire, it's more more of a muck. It, it's the emotions of distress and discouragement and uh, anger and anxiety and worry and inadequacy and shame and loneliness and it's it's the stuff of life that uh, it it doesn't seem spiritual. It doesn't seem uh, it certainly isn't ha- happy and and it seems to get in the way of our productivity. And so we tend to not want to deal with that. And a lot of what we've been what we teach in our our churches and, and Christian books and podcasts, it, it sort of boils down to believe and do. Believe the right things and do the right things. And, mm-hmm. and that's a good start in, in the early Christ stages because what we believe and what we do is very important. But what usually gets left out of those uh, sermons and podcasts and, and articles is the heart and uh, our emotions and especially our will. Uh, and also our relational engagements and habits. And so we need to become a different kind of person with a, a deep rootedness in Christ. And, and that includes uh, emotional honesty like we see from the psalmist in the Psalms. So the understanding that inner journey and finding language for the experiences and the emotions and the needs, uh, really at all the Christ stages, we're, we're turning the lights on. Uh, to help with, with stories and scriptures and guided experiences and lots of practical uh, charts to differentiate between the different stages and the different soul care practices that are helpful. We're giving people words to describe their, the feelings that go along with their faith so that they can pray differently and so that they can see new possibilities and begin to follow Jesus into the next stage. Hmm. Do you find that, you know, do do you, do you work with a lot of people kind of coming from the R stage that are bumping up against the wall into the I stage? Do you find that's a lot of where your time and attention is spent? Yeah, it, it, that's exactly right, Kevin. Uh, we, we call soul shepherding an inner journey ministry. You know, mm-hmm. I think that you're uh, uh, looking into that as well with your, your podcast, you know, mm-hmm. when you talk about following to lead and mm-hmm. we're, we're being a, a Jesus follower. Uh, mm-hmm. That's about humility. It's about submission. And uh, what we uh, teach is that it's also about emotional honesty. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all the, the range of human emotions, we can see that in Jesus. And he shows us how to be healthy and holy, uh, loving mm-hmm. with how we deal with our emotions uh, and temptations. And so, yeah, the, the our stage is it's a great stage. Um, and it's, a, it's, you know, when we discover our gifts and we, we realize that we can serve God and help people. I mean, you know, it feels significant and it is significant. We're seeing fruit and we're blessing people. And, and we, you know, we see, I, we got a particular niche here where we can make a difference. Um, but eventually we start to wear down uh, usually from, from overdoing that in the stress of life. 
And so that's where now the Holy Spirit is nudging us forward to give us a new source of fuel for our soul. Mm -hmm. And so when we hit that wall, you know, again, whether it's a burnout or, or a moral failing or spiritual dryness or compassion fatigue or a, a faith crisis of, you know, questions around suffering and, or doubt and different things, whatever that challenge is, the spirit of truth and the spirit of grace is using that to help us begin to be more uh, real and more, more raw with God and uh, inviting God into that. And if we will do that uncovering and opening work, then it, it begins to cultivate a, a new intimacy with God and brings us into that I stage. And that changes everything. And that, that creates, uh, uh, it facilitates a spiritual renewal of sorts where we come, even our Bible reading begins to become different. And uh, it's just, it's, and so much of it does come down to what you were illustrating earlier, Kevin, when, when you have someone safe to talk to, and it, you know, it doesn't need to be a, a therapist or, or life coach necessarily, it can be a, a soul friend, but someone who can keep a confidence, who, who has a, a tender heart and, and will listen good and not judge you, not give you advice, but, but draw you out, be, be curious, pray for you. And as, as we go on that, that journey, we find that, you know, this is another way to connect with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we might be used to sort of doing that in, in the Bible and in church services, and those are great ways to do it. But we also need to do it in vulnerable relationships. And we need to, and again, those of us who are type A, we have more trouble with this because mm -hmm. we like being the leader. We mm -hmm. like to be in charge. We're used to people coming to us. And so it's really important that, that we uh, discipline ourselves and put, put times in our schedule where I'm going to talk to this pastor or to this friend and, and be vulnerable and ask for help to understand my inner stuff and my junk and shortcomings and seek God's grace there. Because as we do that inner work, the Holy Spirit can re reach deeper into the recesses of our personality and do a transforming work. And that inner journey time, while it can be, you know, there's some pain, there's some questions there, and it's a time when we normally have to slow down some of our ministry activity to make more space for emotion and reflection and prayer and, and more intimate spiritual disciplines and relationships where we're being cared for, and, and not only the output of caring for others, but, but also receiving. But if we do that inner journey work, then it opens us to the S stage of spirit-led ministry. And the, the, the great thing about this is we're actually going back to the activity of the R stage. And we're able to fill up our schedules again more like we did in the R stage, but we have a, a different pacing about our life. Mm -hmm. We're able to, to do this in, a, in an unhurried way. And we, we've, we've been learning new habits of trusting in God and depending on God, new habits of intimacy with Jesus. And so we learn how to do our work in the easy yoke of Jesus. Hmm. Instead of uh, Bill pushing and striving and hurrying to make things happen for God, I'm learning to do my work with the Lord mm -hmm. in that, that easy yoke, which is the easy way of doing hard things. I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus never, you know, life is not easy. Jesus said life is hard. You're going to have tribulation. His easy yoke doesn't mean life is easy. It means that he's got a way. Uh, the yoke is, it's an attachment. It's, it's a relational engagement. And when we, we walk in step with Jesus and we see his smile over us as we're living and relating and working, and then that smile comes onto our face and into our soul, and now we can do our work that way with Jesus. You see, we're learning habits for this. And so that's really uh, the great joy of ministry is when we, we learn that spirit-led ministry way of doing it uh, under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's really what we want to, want to grow into. Okay, so I want to ask about this, and I just realized my light went off in my office here, so I'm trying to get it to come back. There it is. came back on. Um, I want to mainly just for my benefit here, I want to talk about this R to I transition. Um, you know, you just mentioned in the S stage, in the spirit-led ministry stage, you get to be kind of this unhurried leader of sorts. Uh, I told you recently, I, I didn't even know y'all were friends. I recently interviewed your friend Alan Fadling uh, on this podcast of his book, The Unhurried Leader. And as he described it, I was like, 
Yes. Oh, yes. That just sounds so right and so true and so real. And so even as you're describing this S stage of spirit-led ministry in that sense, I go, that that seems like what Alan Fadling is talking about in his book, The Unhurried Leader. So maybe some people relate to me. And, that, you know, for me, I've been very candid. And, and if people listen to this podcast before, over the months, um, of just, for one, in 2020, midway through the year, of just kind of realizing, why why am I feeling so flat? Why am I feeling so unmotivated right now? What's going on with me? That is not like me. Um, I am a type A type person. I like setting goals. I like accomplishing things. I like seeing things move forward. I get excited about results. I'm kind of crazy like that. I meet you. We start talking. Um, and I kind of start asking you from the very beginning, okay, Bill, how do I operate differently? You know, tell me a different... Tell me something different to do in a sense. And, and you'd kind of laugh, and, you know, very gently. And you'd say, ah, I'm not going to give you a kind of a different set of things to go do. And then I remember asking you in the spring, like, so, Bill, I, you know, how do I understand a different way to operate? And then you said something to the effect of what well, I see a lot of people, it takes them having to hit a wall. And I remember thinking, well, I don't want the wall. I just want the the new, the, I want the yeah. deeper intimacy with Jesus without the wall. And then June 15th, 2020, when I found out I had cancer, I remember texting you and I said, well, Bill, I, I think I found my wall. Mm. And, you know, for people like me that are maybe in that R stage that go, you know what, dang it, I'm going to refuse to just live as an imposter of talking about an intimacy with Jesus that I don't really ever experience. I refuse to live that way. Lord, I want something more. Um, what are the, you know, you, you started getting into that. I felt like even a minute ago when you were talking about, you know, vulnerability with friendships and things like that. What do you see are some key changes that people begin to employ as they move from an R stage into an I stage? You know, for instance, you know, from our conversations, one of the things I've realized, it, it'd be easy for me to go and maybe read the Bible more or go and spend time alone with the Lord. But you mentioned it a minute ago about vulnerability in relationships and, you know, being willing to say, hey, look, would you kind of bear my soul here a little bit? That's uncomfortable for somebody like me, Bill. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it yeah. is. What are some things like that that you say, here's some things that people... I don't want to say have to do. So help me uh, use the right words here. Yeah, well, uh, what we teach people is uh, doing nothing. Uh, but then we say, well, you need to do something that helps you do nothing. Hmm. And so that's a hard concept at the R stage. That, that takes some um, thinking and uh, mentally and prayerfully working that through to begin to understand that because you, you have to get comfortable or let me say it this way, you have to get a little bit more comfortable and then a little bit more comfortable with being unproductive. Hmm. Because uh, quiet prayer, uh, uh, deep scripture meditation, uh, asking someone to listen to you and pray for you. I, you know, if you're a type A uh, productivity person, it just feels useless and pointless. There's, there's work to do, there's people to help, you know. And when I'm going, when I serve God, and I don't, I don't need that. It's you know, I'm okay. And uh, that's that's why we start running out of energy and motivation. And you know, I think that in the sovereignty of God, you know, the Lord is lovingly at work in this. And after we've been serving the Lord with our gifts in the R stage for a while, the the Holy Spirit sort of changes things up on us, and uh, you know, allows us to feel uh, dryness or weariness. Um, that probably uh, in grace God protected us from earlier on when we were more mm -hmm. excited about uh, serving God in new and bigger ways in, 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 for some years perhaps. Some of us go into our stage for a number of years. And, mm -hmm. and it's a great stage. It's not a bad stage. It's a wonderful stage to, to serve God with our gifts. We want to do that in all the stages actually, but the our stage is just most intense with that. But the Holy Spirit wants to teach us that way of doing our work with the Spirit. So, the, you know, the big thing is the uh, openness to our, our emotions and our, our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, our struggles, our shortcomings, uh, and reading the Psalms, 
uh, uh, not just studying the Bible, but also meditating on it slowly and asking ourselves, how am I feeling as I'm reading this? Talking with a spiritual director or a counselor, a soul friend, but someone who, who will really listen and ask us questions. And, uh, you know, when that's new to you, uh, and especially if you're uh, an ambitious goal setting type, you, you, you need to put that in your calendar. And so I put, I put it in my calendar, you know, uh, every week for many, many years. And I, 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 my goal today actually is to not, not go a day without a soul talk conversation. Um, our, our podcast that Christy and I do is called Soul Talks because we decided that what we want to do in our podcast is just share with the world what we do every day personally and have a soul talk and then invite listeners into uh, a real uh, real life conversation that Christy and I are having about uh, a soul shepherding topic. And so these are some of the kinds of disciplines that can help us transition uh, when, we, when we've been in our stage a while and we hit that wall and they can help us transition into the inner journey and begin to experience some some relief and some, and some rest and some healing and, and, and uh, new intimacy with God and new intimacy in our relationships and new power. It's disciplines that are more reflective in nature, like meditation, praying the Psalms, quiet prayer, taking a walk in solitude. And it's, and it's relational disciplines where we're talking with a soul friend or uh, gosh, if you're Catholic, you know, you, you go to your priest and you, you go to confession and and hopefully you un unpack that over some time as well. And so it's it's being vulnerable in relationships with people is an important part of this. So let me just say one more thing about that. I, I have a rule of thumb for myself and 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 uh, I suggest this to other people. And that is that you know, when we think about our intimacy with God, uh, I, the the most like a uh, pragmatic way to get an idea w how our intimacy with God levels are is look at the relationship in your life where you, you have the most intimacy. And it's hard to experience in reality more closeness with God than you are experiencing with a person. The problem's not on God's side. The problem's on my side. Mm -hmm. the, fa the faith issues of, you know, well, God is invisible. Of course, God transcends all of that. And that's that we believe in the supernatural. We believe in the power of, of faith and trusting God. But God has made us to love one another. That's the new commandment Jesus gave us. And as Christians, we are called the body of Christ. And so we are to represent Christ to each other. And what happens early in our Christian life, especially as we mature into the R stage, is we are all about doing our best to minister Christ to other people, mm -hmm. which is so good. I mean, it's the most mm -hmm. important thing. But what we what we neglect is letting other people minister Christ to me. Yeah, and we had that earlier in our Christian walk, but it's it's uh, we don't we wouldn't probably say this, and it wouldn't be probably represented in our beliefs, but in in our actual practice, we get away from depending on other people and their prayers and their support and uh, them giving us grace and so forth. And we just start to get so into the outflow that we, we get out of balance. And so just as much as it's important for me to be Christ's ambassador to other people, I need other people to be Christ's ambassador to me. Hmm. And that's, that's an important way for me to be getting filled up with an appreciation of God's grace. Well, you know, I've told you this, Bill, but, you know, God has used you immensely in my life this year, and my hope in bringing in the podcast is that people would really be freed in the same way I've been this year. Of um, There's a lot of well-meaning people out there I know listening as parents, um, as leaders in, the, in ministries and churches and businesses, and to uh, as a reminder to them to really care for their souls as well. I've said this before, people have heard this podcast, but as I've walked through cancer this year, I've told you and, and told others and shared it on the podcast that, you know, there's times like, I don't, I don't feel like reading the Bible right now. I don't, I don't you know, and, and then you would tell me, Kevin, that's okay. And one of my most memorable experiences of 2020 was late in my chemo days of 2020 of laying on the trampoline in my backyard because I was tired of laying in my bed. And I would feel the breeze on me and I'd look up in the pine trees and see them swaying and all I could do between out loud, physical, <laughs> verbal moans was just to pray breath prayers, as I've shared here. You were the one that shared with me the idea of it, of in your kingdom, by your power and for your glory. And I would lay on the trampoline, looking at the sky, going, Lord, I, I have nothing else to offer. 
And it was just it was just so freeing to me to be able to just mm. be honest with the Lord and just say, you know, would you just meet me here right now mm. and walk with me through this? And mm. so thank you for your grace, the way God mm. has used you to be a minister of his grace to me this year. And I really hope that, you know, people are immensely blessed by this as well today. Um, man, I'm getting emotional about this, but it's been a, it's yeah. been one of those years for me. So thank you for your heart, uh, Kevin, and your vulnerability there. And, uh, yeah, it, what a, a, just a tender moment for you with the Lord. And, um, you know, it's because you had a new understanding of a totally different kind of discipline that previously didn't seem like a discipline at all to you because mm-hmm. it, did, it didn't fit in some of the conservative categories for, you know, Bible reading and church attendance and praying through lists of things. And um, But, you know, taking that um, last verse uh, from uh, the Lord's Prayer, you know, in your kingdom, by your uh, paraphrase of it, mm-hmm. and um, meditating on that, uh, and breathing it in and out with deep breathing. Yeah, that's, that's one of the quieting... Uh, prayer practices that really uh, cultivates inner journey spirituality and just really the ISNT stages. And, uh, and then, so then even now with us, Kevin, as you're reflecting on that and, you know, you're, you're blessing all of our listeners and blessing me because I'm right there with you. I'm on that trampoline and uh, without even specifically thinking of it, I, 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 I relating because I've had moments like that myself of, um, many of them. And so you're, without even trying to, you're, you're like engaging in an accidental discipline right now on your podcast because you're remembering that hmm. with gratitude. Mm-hmm. And that facilitates a God moment for you and then mm-hmm. for all of us. And so I would say that's an example of S stage spirituality. Mm-hmm. You're in the easy oak. And you're overflowing with God's grace. Mm-hmm. And I would say that since you and I met, yeah, you you were at the wall, and then then the you know the cancer is the you know that been that huge wall, and you've been doing all this inner journey work. And I would say, yeah, that's that's your home stage since I've known you, and and you're beginning to to uh, poke into some new experiences in spirit led ministry. And probably you had some even years ago. Now and again, this is not like a, a linear. Mm-hmm fixed thing but there's a apparently you know a great deepening for you in inner journey spirituality that's opening up new possibilities for you on what god has ahead for you in uh just a, a greater uh, release of the holy spirit in you and through you and it's it's best it's definitely been freeing and and i get excited about the inward journey um to have greater intimacy with him i i just I get excited about that. So I hope for people listening, you know, like I said, they they would begin to sense the same type of look. Let's let's throw off the masks. Let's not be imposters. Let's really go. You know what, Lord, I want to walk with you, and I want to walk with you more and more deeply uh, each day. And so, um, Bill, I I, I do want to thank you again for being on here. Um, you've been a tremendous blessing. I want to remind people of a few things. Um, so first, uh, Soul Shepherding is a ministry you and Christy lead. Um, Soul Talks is the name of y'all's podcast that I'm sure you can find on Apple Music or Spotify, other places like yeah. that. Um, Journey of the Soul is the book that comes out February the 16th this year, 2021. Um, and man, I really want to invite people to go there. Um, you know, go to Amazon, find that book. Um, you do, I want to call them again, um, institutes. Uh, maybe the Soul Shepherding find- Institute, yeah. Oh, so, so they could probably find out more about that on soulshepherding.com, maybe, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, and those are open to any any ministry leader, servant of the Lord, uh, as an individual or as a couple. And there's an option to earn a certificate in the Ministry of Spiritual Direction. So we, we train people to do the kind of ministry that we do, of uh, listening and spiritual hospitality and guiding other people in their discipleship to Jesus, but in a way that's very you know emotionally honest and soulful. Yeah. Well, there's such a need for it, Bill. So I'm I'm glad that you and Chrissy both have stepped into that space, and um, it's just it's just rich. And so, thank you for your time, Bill. For man, for sharing with me all these months, and for this last hour, and for our listeners as well. I sure appreciate you being here today. Oh, so fun to be with you, Kevin, and and all of your listeners. And 
look forward to connecting again. Yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, for everybody else, thanks again for uh, joining us this week, following to lead with Kevin East. If you enjoy what you're hearing, I'd, I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe, become a part of this community of people that are saying, you know what, Lord, I want to follow you in such a way it changes everything. It changes the way that I live and the way that I lead, both at work and at home. And so hope you enjoy this week. I uh, look forward to interacting with you again here in the future.